Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to talk about how the master's degree scholarships basically vanished in the US. And I am going to compare this with the time when I came to US and what happened over the many years which went by and today there is a state where it's actually very difficult to get scholarship and full financial aid for master's degrees in the US even for US citizens. And what has happened is that only PhD students are nowadays able to get financial aid. So this is something you need to keep in mind. Now, when I came to the US, that was a long time ago in 1989, when the Berlin Wall was dismantled. What happened is that all the students had scholarships for their master's degree. Now, I came to the University of Maryland at College Park and I took a flight from Delhi to Washington DC via Paris. And at that point, most of the students were actually foreign students. I would say almost 70% students in any department were foreign students as far as engineering was concerned and about 30% were US students. But almost all the students had scholarships for even the master's degree. Most of the US students had fellowships from the government and most of the foreign students had RAs or TAs. And in fact, I was lucky to get a graduate school fellowship at that point. And later on, I converted this to an RA. Now, the master's degree situation was such that you could do a master's degree and you could then join a company, but most of the people ended up doing the PhD at that point. Now, let's look at what was the typical composition of the foreign student body at that time. It was generally about 30, 40% Indian students, about 20-30% Chinese students and there also used to be Korean Taiwanese students at that time who came to US and a sprinkle of students from Europe, Middle East and from around the world. So I would still say even at that time the Asian students were dominant. Now at that time what used to happen the Chinese students who used to come used to be much older than the Indian students. The Indian students used to be about 21 to 22, 23 years old for the master's degree. But Chinese students used to be much older and they often used to come for PhD because they had some kind of requirement to do government service before they left the country and so on. At that point, China was still very much in the old approach and it was part of the communistic socialistic system. Now, what started happening slowly, of course, is the type of students changed and I'm going to discuss that next. Now, interestingly, when I was a student, all the students in the department I was in, and in fact, in the whole engineering school, were primarily from the Indian Institute of Technologies, the IITs, these were the Indian students. There was only one student who was actually from Manipal Institute of Technology at that point. And this guy, interestingly, had not received funding and he had come. So we were very surprised because in those days, as far as India is concerned, middle class people simply did not have the money to come to the US and pay for the tuition except for some people who were pretty rich. So this person was of course from somebody whose parents had a company, they had some factories and so on. So he was able to afford his coming to the US and after one semester he was able to get a TA job and so he was also getting financial aid. Now with time what started happening, let's move 10 years forward, let's say move to 2010. And 2010, what happened is that by then, a lot of students started funding themselves and coming to US. So one of the reasons was the reforms which were taking place in India and also in China led to a lot of wealth creation and the middle class became richer. And so people started coming to US after paying for the tuition. So many people would get admission and come to the US. Now, when I had applied, I had got admission to Caltech and MIT, but of course I was not able to join there because we simply didn't have the money to pay the tuition in these colleges, but I was able to get scholarships in some more regular universities such as University of Maryland, Rochester and so on. Now, once students started paying for the tuition fee, the universities figured out that this is a nice system in which we can also make some money through the master's degree program and progressively what happened is that the scholarships for the master's degree program started to decrease 
only students who were extremely good were able to get scholarships for the master's degree program and the professors would actually then need to make a prediction that these master's degree students who were very good who were under scholarship would probably go for a phd so very often what would happen is that these students would be put on some research project and then they would directly finish masters and phd with the same advisor now with the further passage of time it really has become very difficult for students to get scholarships in the master's degree now most of the people are coming into either direct phd programs or they are people who have done their mtech or ms degree abroad and then they are coming to us now as far as us citizens are concerned it's also more difficult nowadays for many people to get scholarships during their master's degree except for some scholarships which are there specifically for us citizens for example by bodies such as the doe the department of defense and so on sometime fellowships from national lab for stem phd's but again the scholarships are largely there for phd students but many a time master's degree people are actually paying their way even if they are us citizens or permanent residents so again this has happened because a plethora of people from around the world are applying to the us universities us education system is very well known throughout the world and what these people want to do is that they want to pay the complete tuition fee and get their master's degree and then maybe they can get the f1 visa they can go for the f1 optional practical training which has now been increased to 3 years for stem graduates and then they can get the h1 visa and so on so actually what happened is that the master's degree system in us became a conduit to migration at the highest skill level so this is something of course which was encouraged by the government by the private sector by the companies by the universities because all the people were essentially benefiting from it but of course one of the negative things is that the nice degrees which we got when things were in the 1980s and 90s where we were funded fully for the masters degree for the phd degree actually petered out so if you look at anybody like sundar pichai or some of those people who came long ago they essentially got scholarships to do their masters degree and then they went on and joined some company maybe later they did mba or they did phd that was all at some expense of somebody else very frequently especially if they did a phd program now what happened to the chinese students is that by 2010 i saw the chinese students had started become pretty wealthy and in fact by 2010 i saw that some of the chinese students had started returning back to their home country so i was on a sabbatical at the university of michigan under a fulbright fellowship and at that time i saw that many of the chinese students were graduating in departments such as electrical engineering computer science and they were directly returning to china to work at some of the top chinese companies for example tiktok huawei zaomi and so on and they were telling me that their salaries in china today or at that time were comparable to whatever they were getting in the us and in fact in the us the salaries are often difficult to get at that level especially if you are a foreign citizen in some cases so that was the time when the exodus had started happening to china and today of course we have seen that china has become pretty top as far as various high tech issues are concerned but as far as the indian people are concerned what happened is that as the people became wealthier more and more people came to us to do these masters degree and now you find a very large diaspora of indians out there the green card lock has become very high such that people have to stay for decades to get their green card and so on so again this was my take on some of the history which will help you understand why the ms situation has become so difficult if you are doing the ms degree in the us be sure that you make a good calculation about the return on investment that you are going to get out of it because most likely you will have to pay money for it but of course in my channel i encourage people to do their masters degrees in their home countries and then to apply to us for their phd because this is going to save them money phd you still get funding to do the phd because nobody in his right mind is probably going to pay money to do a phd and incur permanent head damage for the rest of their life so this was my historical video i hope it will help you understand the situation as to what has happened today this is part of the philosophy of that theory that every thesis contains its own antithesis and the very popularity of the 
higher ed system in US around the world has caused a situation where things have become extremely expensive even at the master's degree level. You would not think normal people would think of getting the master's degree. People would typically do a bachelor's degree and go off and work in the industry and make a lot of money and have much more fun in their life. I'm going to leave some more videos on the end screen which are going to help you pursue your research and education journey further and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.